No, I don't. I listened to some more clips of it though, and the clips. I, I you know, a lot of people wrote in and said they enjoyed Scott the Engineer. They enjoyed the feature well, playlist. Good. You get at least seventy-five, eighty percent enjoyed approving, it. approving it. So good for him. I just thought it was overly produced. Like that, him reading. Well, maybe he was right that the yeah. overly produced is what they want. I, I just, I, I just, I don't know. Sometimes Scott can annoy me. I'm just saying he got positive response. Hmm. Another song that was strongly identified. Another song that was strongly. I, I don't know what. What is he going for there? He wants to sound like. Uh, He's like Casey Kasem. Yeah. He's I'm, a Casey his, Kasem. I'm a historian. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to I'm hear like him. Doris Goodwin. <laughs> <laughs> Another teaching. song that was strongly yeah. identified as being an anti-war song was For What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield. I really liked the song. So while at a friend's house one day, he mentioned he was selling a bunch of albums, and one of them was the first Buffalo Springfield album. Oh, he's just such a bore. No, but why is he that. playing the birds behind... Oh, because it ties in with his story. Oh. Right? If you, if I stuck with this. And oh, so you know why the birds yeah. are playing. But he's I do because it, actually I was um, I had a rope strung up to my ceiling <laughs> and I had it halfway around my neck. I was trying to kick the chair out, but I couldn't. So I do know the end of his story. So I bought it for him. I get home, I put it on, and guess what? No, for what it's worth. And I'm saying, what the hell is going on here? What I later found out was. I had the original issue of the album, which didn't contain For What It's Worth, but it did contain oh, this song. Baby, don't me. Oh, it's so... I, I, you know, I don't even know why he was playing the birds. You're right. None of it makes sense. No. <laughs> and it's all produced and every, all this music. Like, like, it's just, it can, did contain I this one. He wanted a radio show. He, he produced like a rock special. Knows. He produced a whole special. Like a, right. I think he, he smelled award winning here. And I guess the other thing about it was like Scott put like eighteen hours of his own time into this, uh -huh. not his own time, my time, into uh, into this, and it proves to me he can really devote himself to something. And this was his own initiative. He asked yeah. to do this, and mm -hmm. then he put it together. And those stories are just insufferable. I love it. Well, he had the Buffalo Springfield album, and I bought it from him. Yeah. Oh. And I was such a loser. <laughs> I didn't get the album I wanted. <laughs> you see, I'm not oh. And this song is just the shittiest song ever. You know it's what? The reason it wasn't on a Buffalo Springfield record. Even Scott's musical taste yeah. is oh, boring. It's boring. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you hit it on the head. His musical taste is boring. <laughs> Here's another song no one cares about. I still want to know what that Earth What Opera song was. Scott's yelling in his office. What's he yelling about? Come in here and yell. Be <laughs> worthwhile. He's going to yell in his office. That helps. You motherfuckers! I can't stay a of you. You motherfuckers! Yeah. You don't know nothing! Now he'll come in here all calm. What are you yelling about? I wasn't yelling. Your show sucks. I don't play the whole clip. Of, I already play a clip of that song. Why'd you play the birds? That was just background. <laughs> he likes talking over it the It was bird. a protest song. That yeah. was the theme uh, of that uh, segment. That makes no sense. That song by Springfield, I don't play the whole thing. I just play a clip. Oh, that's why wow. it wasn't on the album because it sucked. Right. So why so play it? Why did I just you... played a clip this of it? Then I played that Buffalo meant Springfield something for to you. Worth, right after this. What? Right after the clip that you're playing is for what it's worth. Oh. Well, uh, some people wrote they liked it. Most pe most people did. I, I love the concept of the playlist show. But what kind of asshole picks a song that runs for 10 minutes and 36 fucking seconds? The Great American Eagle Tragedy. Did you ever get, get me that song? I want to hear it. No, of course not. Uh, I'm, I'm out of, I, I work so hard. Look at that hard. face. I yeah. love the look. Uh, you mean the look? I really like want to do it again. I can bring it right I can put it right up for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you didn't want that, did you? Well, don't get it now. I'm talking to you. Uh, this one, Howard, the, the playlist idea is great. I even love Scott's list. Keep it going. As a fan of classic rock and living throughout that era, I loved it. As far as Scott's commentary, it's Scott. Always trying to be one of the cool kids, but still an outcast. Yeah, I think he was trying to be like <laughs> Jim it. Kerr or yeah. something. And then, yeah, like Casey Kasem Jr. over there. Your stories are so boring. You went to your friend's house to buy the record. I bought the record for for what it's worth and didn't have it. Right, That's oh. the story. it was for what it's worthless. Get yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Playlist on Howard 101. I'm Scott the Engineer. This is the original version of All Along the Watchtower. Oh yeah, I heard this. Can I just give you a production note? You took too long getting to the Hendrix thing. Watch what I mean. 
written and performed by Bob Dylan, and shortly thereafter covered by Jimi Hendrix, who turned this... There must be some way out of here... Into this... Say the joke of no. Jesus' thing. We're going to have to wait now. To give it some flavor. There's too yeah. much oh. confusion... See how bad this was. I can't get no relief... Into this... Too long... Just, just a note. He's just proving how smart he is. Look, I know this. Look, this turned into this. No, not yet. Oh, you're too fast. <laughs> Sorry, no. you're right. This <laughs> turned into that. <laughs> that wasn't dead air, though. Shh. I'm, I'm doing your impression of you. <laughs> this. <laughs> Ta da. This is like a rock special. This is a, I just want you to come in and play some of your music. That's all. You spent 18 hours of my time putting well, this together. A lot of it been, was my time. Could have been a half hour. I did a lot of it. I remember sitting in my the room. The question is, did he not... ever take any of your work home? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yes, my, my work he doesn't take home. <laughs> but he's talking again. Seen or so. And by the way... Well, i got to rewind now. I missed what you said. I don't want to miss a word. No, you can't. Hold on. My room really wasn't... I remember sitting in my room at age 15 or so. And by the way, my room really wasn't a room. It was more like a closet. It only measured six feet by six feet. So I would put my headphones on, turn down the lights, and turn up the volume as loud as I can get it. And then I would blow my brains out with this song. What a rebel. Unbelievable, right? Then I would close my eyes and imagine my room was bigger. Six by six was your room? Wow. <laughs> yeah. I was like a prisoner was, in Attica. But we had, my sister was five years younger than me, so... No wonder I lost my hair. My we, head was rubbing against the wall. We the electromagnetic force with the headphones drove out my hair. <laughs> we, we lived in a small two-bedroom apartment, right. and my parents moved into the small room and split the master bedroom in half. For you, you for the kids. Right. They put a wall up. Just One think how them, great their life would have been if they didn't have kids. They would have had some room. <laughs> yeah, they'd have a big apartment. Uh, I can't take it. Hey, who knew Uncle Fester liked Hendrix in it? <laughs> <laughs> He's the coolest. He's the coolest, right, Bigfoot? Oh, yeah, look yeah. at that guy. Fucking cool. Cool, is it? Uh-oh. Another amazing concert I went to at the Fillmore East oh, was in April of 1971. And it was a really odd mix of music. Opening the show was Wishbone Ash. Right, right. Who had just released their first album. See, if you talk normal, it would be good. This is all written written out. I know, because I couldn't... I had to write it out for myself. <laughs> no, you it's didn't. Just, no, you didn't. We wanted to hear you. No, you don't. <laughs> Even if you were like, you know... I would hey, have been stumbling around. I once went to That'd like this uh, concert, Wishbone Ash, and it was, you know, kind of shitty. Maybe if you were just talking, you would have left out all the boring facts. Yeah, yeah. I haven't found one interesting thing yet. <laughs> Scott went to a Wishbone Ash concert. <laughs> he was the only one ever who went to a Wishbone Ash concert. A few months earlier. This is Wishbone Ash? Yeah. Another great song. I uh, know. I think you were trying to prove how many songs you knew. And no, stuff. no, no. I was yeah. just trying to... Because that's not a favorite of yours, is it? No, I don't like Wishbone Ash, but I was... So why would you oh put my it... God. It's supposed to be just... your favorite song. But I was telling the story of the concert. Yeah, but it's a horrible story. And how eclectic what, what, it was. What? What? We don't how hear about odd, the story. How an odd mix of... The Wishbone Ash opened and Elton John was the headliner. Yeah. Let me play you the song that bored the oh shit out God, of me. Oh my God, he's taking us... We're having to live his life. I'm playing clips <laughs> of this. I see. The clips are a little longer. Having to live his okay. life. Yeah, oh, living Scott's life. He, it's bad enough Scott had to live his life. Now we're living it. <laughs> Who could have possibly been really listening to this? The headliner of the show was Elton John, who oh. back then dressed really flamboyantly. And he finished the show with an unforgettable performance of Burn Down the Mission. Burn down the mission. Now, is that a favorite song of yours? Yeah, that is one of so my favorite So do you play songs. it all the way through? I don't play this one all the way through. <laughs> Big because, build up. Yeah. Oh, 
I, I had to get that in there because so want to get out. That of was from life. one of the best albums ever made. Uh, that was from Tumbleweed Connection, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> he had to get that in there. What? Just a clip. Well, these shows are usually produced by Steve Brandano and uh, John Kerber, but mm -hmm. Scott insisted on doing his own thing. You know, you know. Yes, Kat, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. I just wanted to say that I found all of it to be hilarious. I, it was <laughs> but that wasn't like, the idea. <laughs> I know, but it was more like a historical documentary than an actual playlist. Yeah, he was um, going for like, they used to run these rock specials on terrestrial radio, the uh, history of rock and roll, with like different, mm -hmm. uh, different artists commenting on the songs. So Scott was trying to create one of those, except it was Scott. Yeah. Usually it's like Mick Jagger, Paul McCartney, Bowie. But that made it so funny. I mean, I I was in tears literally listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just overly serious and. Oh my god, it was hilarious. Yeah. See, but my I, concept for the whole show was that, like, hey, what if one of the guys came in and treated you to an hour with him, just playing some of his favorite songs and telling you why he liked them? Oh, I absolutely. Fred was. Scott turned Fred it into the amazing. history of rock and roll. Right, and and your own personal history. I mean, well, I only lived in a six by six room. I only had room enough for three albums. That's right. Like no one cares about Scott, and now he has a special to really drive that home. <laughs> we were raised in Queens in a six by six room. We were like. By the way, my room was really a closet. By the way, my parents actually gave up their master bedroom <laughs> and split it in half so, so that, that the children could luxuriate. Yes. <laughs> So I put on my headphones and, I and blasted it, my brain out. Blasted my brains out. Because, you know, I was a pretty wild guy, despite what you know of me now. I smoked hot mixed with mothballs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that odor is. Because I Come lived on. in a closet. <laughs> now I want to tell you another fascinating story about um, another closet I lived in. <laughs> Here's another song I don't like. Before I play you a song I do like. Did I ever tell you about the Wishbone Ash Elton John concert <laughs> I attended? <laughs> there was a very turbulent time in our history. <laughs> Wishbone Ash and Elton John <laughs> were a good reprieve from the turmoil of our day. <laughs> <laughs> just so obvious that he was just wanting to show off. I can't believe yeah. he just it, said that he put a shit song on that he didn't even like. I mean, it's ridiculous, but it was fantastic for what it was. The 60s were a turbulent time, according to a documentary I saw. Of course, I never left my 6x6 six six room. <laughs> <laughs> when he started playing the Malcolm X thing, I mean, yeah, I just, it's like I Scott left. was in the middle of it all. The protests, he was down at South. It wasn't Malcolm X. Pay the, attention. It was, it was Martin, Martin Luther King. King. Yeah, whatever. Pay attention. But, but it's just like... like, like Dull dream. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I have a nightmare. I have a nightmare. <laughs> I I, uh, I have to tell you that it was like Scott went down south and marched with Reverend. Martin right, he Luther was King. black. He was. Yeah, yeah. He was a bed. He was everywhere. Listen, I, you know, a lot of people. <laughs> he was. He was everywhere. He was like such a part he was like of the Zellig. 60s. Yeah, Zellig. he was such a part of the '60s scene. I remember when Stalin rolled into. <laughs> the good times really started to roll when we were part of the Haight Ashbury scene. That's my next play. Peace and love. Peace and love. <laughs> Do you guys have that clip? That was. That's one I absolutely. Which one? Lost. The one. Uh, from the Martin Luther yeah, King. I, mean, oh, yeah, I played that yesterday. Oh, yeah, I don't know if I could handle it again. <laughs> I had a dream. But no, it's okay. I think we we visited that already. <laughs> By the way, it looks like Scott's gotten fat again, too. Like he had gotten, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. 25? 20. <laughs> now my waist See, is what six happened by was six. What? I hurt my knee and I couldn't work out. So no, I can't work I'm, out. I'm back to. Uh, so why let's do another playlist. So why eat, why not cut down on your calories? Well, I tried to watch it, but you yeah. know sometimes. Hard. What do you like to eat? That's so. You know, now that we're learning about you, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me tell you what I like to eat. Well, you're listening to it while you eat. This Bacon is my food. Bits. I like Italian food. You know. It, it, why it don't was, we do a show where we come in and talk about Italian food and desserts and <laughs> bagel bits? <laughs> I don't like bagel bits. Bagel bits. I like bagels. Okay. I like a bagel with some schmear. I really don't eat that much, but I still eat, you know, egg oh, whites. Oh, you eat plenty. I eat egg whites for breakfast. That's it? On a wrap, that's nope. it. On a wrap, so you have bread. A whole wheat wrap. So why don't you have half a wrap, because now you're not exercising. Well, I'm exercising now. Oh, you are? I'm back to exercise. Oh. Yeah. What do you eat for lunch? Um, 
Hmm. I'm so it glad could, you're taking an interest. It could be um, a salad now. Mm, that delicious I'm, salad. You Before I was, when it comes out of my duty. I would, eat, I, would eat, I would be eating like a sandwich or something <laughs> bad for me. So how did you gain the 20 pounds? That's what I because I would eat dessert after dinner and that would kill me. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I, did, like I don't cream? eat a lot. Hello, I like ice cream. Ben I like cake. I like cake. You know, so I have one fucking pleasure in life. Yeah, right. <laughs> Makes me gain weight. What are we talking about now? We're listening to Mountain. Yeah. Another live show I got to oh, see was okay. not at a well-known venue, oh, but in my high school. I, another show I saw was not at a well-known yeah. venue. We don't need that information. Oh yes, you do. No, of course. Don't you, you want do. to get to know Scott? It's a story Why behind the song. Just said another concert was wherever it was. <laughs> Auditorium. Well, because it's fashion. Because this case had no life. <laughs> right. That's your view. I lived in a yeah, shitty room. It wasn't. We wanted. I, I, I encompassed my whole life in one hour. So that's it. Bayside High School in Queens, New York. Oh wow. It was late. It all began there. You know, yeah, these stories right. are interesting when the guy ends up a huge success. The problem is he was at Bayside, Queens, and he grew up, and he stayed in Bayside. I'm still there. <laughs> 1967, and the name of the group was The Vagrants. Most of you probably... No, they're The Mountain. This no, is, no, no. This no. is Mountain. You're not he's listening to what I'm talking no, about. but he's going oh, to go into a Vagrant out. song. Oh, I zoned, I zoned out. I'm sorry. I mean, I just the I just concert I saw was the Vagrants. Oh, you saw the legendary Vagrants. Yes, I did. They're saying Where wherever it was. What? Which venue is that again? It's a <laughs> high school. High school. High school venue. auditorium. Yeah. Not a great venue. No, hmm. Vagrants. Okay. But their lead guitarist went on to form this group. Just say the name of the group. Keeping us guessing. Casey I think most people know this group. Yeah, well, <laughs> not everyone knows Never in My Life, believe it or not. Tickle your ass with a feather? <laughs> I'm with you, it's a great band, but... Yeah, awesome. Oh, but all the back information. Can I ask Scott a question really quickly? Oh, no. <laughs> Please. It's, all right, go it's ahead. Simple. Scott, did you, did you make the the playlist because you love music or because you wanted to show off your production value which could come back a little of both i don't need to show off my production value i've been uh, doing it for a long time it so speaks for itself everybody knows what i can do yeah. but I, I enjoy doing it that's why i did it. he was all hopped up because now it was his turn to be a dj you know scott and he was, was going to show everybody how it should be done scott was in it for years at plj and for carol miller and other djs and now he's going to show them what he's learned and he's going to teach us all how it goes. I'm not trying to teach anybody right. anything. You should have just talked. That's my point. Okay. And you would have saved a lot of hours of this mess. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Hey, Howard, I just one thing to throw out, and I'll let you go. I want to recommend a musical documentary for you to check out starring Jim Page, The Edge, and Jack White. It Might Get Loud is what it's called. Yeah, I, 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 I tried to watch it. It bored me. Yeah, I couldn't get it. Did through. it really? Yeah, I, it's not for me. I'd fuck at the Jimmy Page. If it was just Jimmy Page, I'd be fine. But who were the other guys in it again? Jack White. The Edge, who I don't like that much, but Jack White. I don't care about The Edge, and I don't care about Jack White. Oh, no offense. (laughs) You know, I just don't care. Jimmy Page I care about. Yeah, Trevor. Hey, Howard. I am originally from Canada, and there's a guy in Toronto named Alan Cross. He's like the Ken Burns of rock documentaries and rock history. And I think Scott... Heard one of his programs. Yeah, we yeah, we've all heard them. These the, these specials they put on terrestrial radio on the weekend. I used to do. I used yeah, to history of rock engineer continuous yeah, history yeah. of rock and roll. So Scott showing and you. so he was doing it for us. Yes. Yeah, fucking nightmare. But I like it too. It's fun. I mean, it's you gave us something to talk about. Yeah, yeah. done it right. It's it fun to goof on. Yeah, of course. Right. If you'd done it right, we would have been bored. I got plenty more material for you. Don't worry. Do another one, but <laughs> just get on there and just <laughs> like like do it live. No retakes. An hour. Okay. Hey, here's a cool... Re- bring in ten records and talk like what Meg Griffin does. Okay. Okay? You got it. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Fascinating. What was the venue? Oh, Bayside High School. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Home of the Bayside High School Commodores. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, by the way, at that high school, we swam nude. <laughs> That's it. That's the high school. A that, young uh, Scott the Engineer. Beat Cardoza. <laughs> Cardoza. Yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. He couldn't have gotten laid in high school, could he have? No. That's mm. why he was sitting in that six-by-six six room. <laughs> Robin, it's time for news.